My entitled mother intentionally poops herself because she hates the wedding that she's having to attend as a bridesmaid and she's upset that the day isn't about her. And I honestly could not be more traumatized and more disgusted by her actions. As a result, she's now banned from every wedding in the family forever. Here's what happened. So this happened when I was in my early 20s. My mother's cousin Mary was getting married and she wanted me, my entitled mother, my sister and a couple other female relatives to be a part of the wedding planning process. My entitled mother hated the idea of being a bridesmaid. Whenever we would go do wedding planning stuff, she would complain the entire time. She hated the bridesmaid dresses, the hair and makeup ideas, and had a meltdown over the shoes. My sister, who is very much the carbon copy of my entitled mother, would also throw fits. I didn't really like much of Mary's ideas either, but I went along with it because I wanted to support her. I'm just a bridesmaid. She was mostly wheelchair bound and could only walk for a short amount of time before she got winded and had to sit down. I can't lie, the bridesmaid dresses were pretty ugly. It was a pale army green with short sleeves with a camouflage sash around the waist. They were cut just below the knee and the shoes were combat boots. Mary's husband by the name of Kyle works for the military so they were going with a military style theme. Our hair had to even be done up in a donut bun on the back of the head with the hair flat against the scalp and the makeup had to be minimal. But despite the bridesmaids hating all of this, Mary absolutely loved it. And that is honestly all that should have mattered. But my entitled mother would not let it go. Her aunt had to rein her in on several occasions and remind her that this is Mary's day and not hers. I can't really blame my mother and my sister for hating the dress and the shoes, but they honestly should have just sucked it up like the rest of us. The lack of flowers was an even bigger problem. Instead of flower arrangements, Mary and Kyle went with black paint painted jars filled with sticks with a model tank sitting beside it as the centerpiece as well as dog tags as gifts to send home with the guests. Kyle has a huge collection of models that he put together and painted himself. It was his one hobby that he enjoyed. On the sides of the aisle were fake rifles lining it with pale green paper streamers. It was incredibly ugly but again it was Kyle and Mary's day so what they wanted they got even if it didn't look good. The day of the wedding we were scheduled to get our hair and makeup done at a small salon a few blocks away from the American Legion, where the wedding was taking place. The bun in my hair was so tight, I got to experience a temporary brow lift while also acquiring a terrible headache. I noticed right away that my entitled mother and my sister were nowhere in sight. I called the house trying to get a hold of them, but they didn't answer. It was already close to wedding time, and we were starting to get a little panicky. Mary was looking lovely in her wedding gown, but she too noticed that my entitled mother and my sister were completely missing and at this point she began to get upset. Finally at less than 30 minutes until wedding time they both rolled in and we all looked at them horrified. My entitled sister was wearing a bright neon pink dress with black high heels big hair and bright loud makeup and my entitled mother was even more horrifying. She was wearing a pale green dress it was so pale that in fact it could be mistaken for a wedding dress and to top it all off she was completely drunk, clutching a cocktail in her hand and laughing to herself when she saw how upset Mary was. At this point, Mary began to cry, getting really upset. Now, I do not advocate for violence, but this is one instance where I highly considered it. Thankfully, though, I didn't need to, because on that particular day, my aunt woke up and chose violence. She grabbed my entitled mother by the arm and forced her into the chair. She told her and my entitled sister that they will both be changing into the dresses that Mary had paid for and that they will get their hair and makeup done the way that Mary wanted it done. And if they didn't want to do that, she would personally see to it that the two of them would end up being dragged with the cans behind Kyle and Mary's car after the wedding, praying that Kyle and Mary would go on the highway so that they would experience the most painful experience of their lives. The rest of us sat stunned in silence, not wanting to get on this woman's bad side. My entitled sister began to whine but relented after the threat of being smacked around by my aunt. We barely made it on time as it was with less than a few minutes out from the time the wedding would start. I walked with my escort down the aisle as the music began to play. My entitled mother was so petulant about the whole thing that she was tugging at her escort's arm and acting belligerent. She was loudly commenting on the decor, calling it hideous and insulting people as she walked by them. The poor groomsman has my respect for enduring her behavior for the few minutes that he was escorting 
escorting her down the aisle. My entitled mother stood behind me, and my spoiled sister soon followed. Once all of us were lined up in our respected places, Kyle walked down the aisle, dressed in his formal military uniform. He looked so happy, up until my entitled mother began to make comments about how stupid he was for marrying a cripple and being stuck with her for the rest of his life. I snuck a look over to my aunt, who was fuming and looked like she wanted to punch my mom in the face. She told her to shut up or else, but my entitled mother's laughter and wily grin soon shifted to a sneer. I whispered back at her, begging her to please cut it out. When Mary was coming down the aisle, her father was pushing her in her wheelchair. My entitled mother began to groan, making a grunting sound as if she was in pain. I looked back at her and her face was as red as a tomato. I whispered, asking if she was okay and she didn't say anything. I looked over at my aunt, who was glaring daggers at her and waiting for an excuse to knock her out. Once Mary got to the end of the aisle, her father helped her stand and Kyle helped to hold her up so the priest could begin. As the priest was talking, I heard the most disgusting sound behind me. It was so loud that the priest lost focus and went silent. It was as if something had exploded and the smell that followed it began to fill the air. My spoiled sister and the other bridesmaids began shouting. I turned around and looked at my entitled mother and then looked down to see what was happening. Her legs as well as the floor surrounding her was splattered with soupy poop. Mary was so horrified by the situation that she nearly collapsed and had to be helped into her wheelchair. My entitled mother was acting fake though. She was pretending to be embarrassed, overly exaggerating that she actually just pooped herself and looked around asking for some assistance in cleaning herself up. She even looked at the groomsman who escorted her out and in a sickeningly sweet voice asked if he would volunteer. And I've got to be honest, he looked like he wanted the ceiling to cave in on him. She looked so satisfied with what she did that she was grinning ear to ear to see everyone causing a fuss over her with not a shred of remorse. My aunt was so fed up that she sucker punched my entitled mother square in the jaw and the two of them got into a brawl. Other guests had to break them up. Eventually the police were called and much to her shock and humiliation, my entitled mother was escorted out. She tried to argue, but Kyle told her that he wanted her gone. My entitled mother and my spoiled sister both looked at me as I was going to, but Kyle insisted that I stay. Some of us were vomiting from the smell because it was that bad. I like to think that I have a strong stomach, but this was from another world. We all pitched in to clean up the mess. By the time we were done, Mary and Kyle were nowhere to be found. My aunt found them outside, and Mary was in tears with Kyle holding her. I apologized profusely for my mother's behavior. I offered to pay to have the rug professionally cleaned, as it had been a gift from a late colonel who had been a patron there some years ago. I know a simple steam clean would have gotten the job done, but I wanted to show just how sorry I was for my entitled mother making their day all about herself and ruining such a precious thing. They said it wasn't necessary. Once the smell cleared out, we were able to continue the wedding. The reception was quiet and we all ate in silence. Once I got home that night, my entitled mother was giving me the silent treatment. I found her on the couch, drinking whiskey and glaring at the wall. Her bridesmaid's dress and boots were stuffed into the trash and the dress was shredded like it had been butchered with scissors. My sister called me terrible names and said that I was a traitor because I didn't support our mother. I told her that I can't support someone who would purposefully poop themselves just to take the spotlight off of a bride on her wedding day. Eventually, my aunt spread the news to everyone on that side of the family. Much of our family cut communication with her after that. She would get angry and embarrassed if anyone brought it up. She maintained for years that it was an accident, but anyone who was there and saw what happened knew she did it on purpose. And it was all out of spite and because she couldn't stand the day not being about her. She was never invited to any weddings in the family after that. Every time someone in the family announced their wedding online, she would whine about not getting an invite, but they would remind her of what she did and that it was the reason why she would not be invited to another wedding. That is, until she can learn how to act like a human being and not like a wild animal seeking attention. I still talk to Mary and Kyle now and again, and they are honestly doing great. Kyle is retired from active duty, and he now serves as a drill sergeant. So overall, despite the terrible circumstances my mother tried to force on them, Kyle and Mary's lives look great, and I honestly could not be happier for them. The amount of times it took me to read through this story is unprecedented. I laughed and cracked up more times than I can possibly describe. This is the funniest story I've ever heard in my life. This lady literally pooped herself on purpose, mind you, just because she didn't like the 
wedding and just because she didn't like that it wasn't about her. How unhinged and crazy do you have to be to intentionally do that in public? That legitimately blows my mind. But thankfully, this didn't dampen the attitude of Mary and Kyle and they got married anyways, even if it was probably the most awkward day of their life. I think if anything, nobody will ever forget that. And I don't think they should. This lady's crazy. I would never invite her back to a wedding either. But what would you do if you were in this situation? Leave a comment down below because I honestly don't know how I would react if an extended family member rage pooped all over themselves simply because they didn't like my wedding. I just found out the girl I married five days ago cheated on me a year ago and I honestly don't know what to do. I honestly need some help because I'm too embarrassed and confused to go to anyone for some advice. Me and my girl had been together for just about four and a half years and last year she had a mental breakdown if you will. She came home and told me that she was stressed out with law school as well as her work schedule and that she just can't handle a relationship right now. And when this happened, this absolutely crushed me and I was messed up pretty badly mentally when this happened. I have a history of depression, especially after I got out of military service. And right when this happened, I was definitely feeling it again. We ended up coming to a compromise and decided that we would take a break so she could figure her own stuff out. However, we just slept in different rooms and just didn't talk for like a week or two. It was miserable. Once we decided that we could continue our relationship after making healthy conversations about changes that need to be made in our relationship, I was very fearful that she was hooking up with other guys during the break as she worked at a bar till about 3 in the morning every night. And some nights she just simply wouldn't come home. She had assured me that nothing ever happened and at the time I believed her. Fast forward to this past weekend and five days after our wedding, she tried to airdrop me a bunch of our wedding photos but she accidentally sent me a bunch of random photos from her phone instead and in those random photos I found a screenshot of messages from one text message and it was clearly of her giving this one guy her phone number as well as her flirting with him and snapchatting with him which was honestly the worst one out of the bunch they were talking about kissing the night before and it was very clearly flirtatious I immediately confronted her about it and she told me it happened during our break and that she is sorry but she didn't want to tell me because she was scared I would never forgive her and that I would just hate her because of that but what she's saying is not true because the text messages that she sent him were from before our break by about a week this obviously led to a huge fight when we both got home from work after all the yelling and tears I sat there for a couple of hours by myself trying to figure out what to do I told her I don't think I have a choice to forgive her I can't face the embarrassment of having to tell my family less than a week after the wedding to break it off and my parents always raised me to be forgiving and that it's the right thing to do but it's been a couple days since then and we had a big party that mutual friends were throwing so we both went together I had to act like everything was fine and dandy the whole weekend which I think gave her the idea that everything is cool but every morning I wake up next to her and I honestly can't stop thinking about the messages that she sent another man I now feel as if I can't even kiss her right now because all I picture is that text with another guy I'm not sure what to do and I'm honestly not sure if I'm overreacting or if I'm just being too nice. I'm just so lost and hopeless and I feel betrayed. I want to make it work, but I don't know where to start or how to regain the trust that she lost. What should I do? The timing of this is absolutely unfortunate and all because she sent the wrong photos to the original poster and it honestly sounds like the original poster's wife manufactured a break of some kind between the two of them just so she can have some kind of loophole for this affair and that honestly is really toxic if that's the case. I think if you want to try and make this work, you obviously can. It's going to take a lot of hard work on both of your ends, but I think it's possible. But at the end of the day, she hid something from you major, and that in my opinion is just not fair for you. So examining your relationship with your wife of five days is probably the best thing you could do right about now, because otherwise silently fuming over this situation and the text message you saw is only going to drive you nuts. And the only solution, in my opinion, is going to be addressing this, one way or the other. My wife resents me for my depression and wants to end our marriage because of it and I'm honestly not sure what to do. For some background information, I'm suffering from depression from multiple causes. I have lower back issues and I live in frequent pain and it's sometimes quite incapacitating. This has led to me putting on a fair bit of weight as I'm not anywhere near as active as I used to be. These past four years, I have been a stay-at-home dad and prior to that, I was on disability support. I can't go back to construction with my injury and was looking to find an office job with little success. My wife also suffers from depression, but she is 
is handling it a lot better these days. She's just got a new job that doesn't suck. She's bought herself a new motorcycle and she is studying part-time. We've been married for nearly eight years and we have a four-year-old son. Over the past couple of months, I've noticed that my wife was avoiding me and not returning my affection. She would seemingly go out of her way to avoid physical intimacy by either saying she was tired or just flat out ignoring me when I attempt to initiate. I tried talking to her about what was going on and we tried some things just to see if anything would help. We even tried a date night every week, but she never told me quite what the issue was. A few weeks ago, I broached the subject of her somewhat cold demeanor towards me and she brushed it off as being tired and stressed out. I try to support her in any way I can. I cook every day. I take care of the house. Our son is a big point of stress for both of us and he is four years old and constantly fighting us on everything, including toilet training. When he gets worked up, he will quite often yell at me to get out or just to leave him alone and that he only wants mom. As a child of divorce whose father wanted nothing to do with me as a child, this really hits a nerve with me and has sent me spiraling further into depression. But regardless of how dark my thoughts get, I will not leave my wife and son without a husband and a father. Saturday rolls around and we had a party for a friend of mine that evening at 7 o'clock. Our son was with his grandparents. My wife organized with her boss to go to Sydney and pick up her new bike and bring it back, saying that she would be back shortly after lunchtime. But she didn't get back until 6 o'clock at night. When I asked her what had taken so long, she was very non-committal and cold. I finally asked her, are we okay? As in, is our marriage okay? To which she responded by saying, probably not. I told her again how it seemed like she was treating me like a roommate and not a husband. She then apologized and asked if I still wanted to come with her to the party. I told her, of course I do. And we went and we had a good time for the most part. We got home afterwards and went to bed. I didn't try and push the conversation further as she had gotten up at four that morning and was completely exhausted. The following morning, I asked her what we were going to do about this. And she finally opened up and told me that she had realized a while ago that she resented me for my depression. She said that she was the only income earner in the house and it seemed like everything was on her. She said it might be better if we split for a while. And at this point, I asked for clarification because it immediately struck me that when we were first together and when she was depressed, I supported her and helped her get through it. She even told me multiple times that she would not be alive if it were not for me. Yet here she is ready to throw the whole marriage away because I'm depressed now. She explained it was because I'm not trying to get better. I'm constantly struggling with my depression and because it first stemmed from my weight gain and my back issues which are constantly reinforcing each other, it makes it difficult. I have been trying to lose weight now for quite a while. I'm down about 12 kilograms since Christmas and it's been a very slow going process and is not helped by my low willpower. I find myself snacking on occasion for the positive chemicals that I get from it. She had been pushing me to see a psychologist and talk about the stuff that's going on with my depression and possibly going on antidepressants. However, I found it almost impossible to open up to my wife about this, which is the person I feel the most comfortable with in the world. And if I can't even talk to her about this, how on earth could I possibly talk to a stranger about it? Looking back at my upbringing and having it beaten into me that men don't have feelings, it makes me hard to take any kind of steps in this direction. I would quite often get the belt as a child just for crying, and that honestly can change a person. Anyways, I told her that I would seek professional help, but she says that it's too little too late, and her feelings for me have changed. She won't lie to me and say that there is hope for the marriage if I get help, but I can't help but feel like she's been lying to me for months, saying that everything was fine. If she had just approached the subject before, it wouldn't have gotten this far out of hand, and we could have tried to fix it. But she said that she was worried about how I would react. I've never so much as raised my voice towards her, and she's apparently scared of me, which I honestly don't deserve in the slightest. She's letting me stay here for now, as we rent from her parents, but is adamant that the marriage is over. I don't know how she can just throw away our relationship like that, but she is unwilling to work on it with me. I've told her that I will do whatever it takes, but she just wants to wash her hands of it and be done. And at this point, I honestly don't know what to do. The way your wife is acting is incredibly selfish. I mean, you were there for her when she absolutely needed it the most. But now that you're in that similar spot and you feel like all hope is lost, she's basically saying it's time for you to get out and get going. And the fact that she's trying to retroactively blame you for not getting help sooner when you didn't feel like you were in a place to get help is really hypocritical because I'm sure you had that conversation with her in the past as well. It's honestly just very inappropriate. This also shows that her happiness is way more important than 
and trying to help you with your happiness. And that, in my opinion, is a massive red flag because it's showing how selfish she truly is. Regardless, I really hope this doesn't tear apart your marriage because you made the effort to make it work when she was depressed. And hopefully she can return the favor and try and make sure that your son has both of his parents in his life. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.